Hello and welcome to TitoCast episode 584, recorded the weekend of December 14th. I'm your host, Patrick. I'm going to do the news by myself again this week because there's just not a lot in schedules and all that fun stuff. Uh, should get through this pretty quick and get you to part three of our Epic Lives Past Life Prioritization discussion. The screenshot this week Acquired has an intense look in the 444th screenshot of the week. Thanks, Gold Rule, for sending in this week's screenshot. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a little creepy. <laughs> Very well done, though. We like to talk about Dungeons & Dragons online nearly every weekend. You can catch us through Twitch, YouTube, the DDO forums, or iTunes. Uh, you can also visit our website at dodocast.com. Dodocast is hosted by Cyber Ears, the awesome podcast hosting network. And shows are usually available within a few days of recording. Uh, the next show, uh, let's take pause for a moment. There will probably only be one more show between now and the end of the year. Um, and it will probably kind of be, it, it may not be on the weekend so much as it might be kind of uh, floating around somewhere. I haven't really figured out when that's going to be exactly. Uh, but with the holidays and, uh, and stuff, it's probably just going to be one more uh, episode. However, we I will try to make sure I update the calendar. At DioCast.com, so if you want to check out the sales and December deals and that stuff, uh, that should be uh, available there. Uh, but you can stay updated by following us on our social media pages or our website, DioCast.com, with our calendar. Uh, on the podcast this week, uh, like I said this will uh, be part three, which will conclude our past life prioritization series as a whole and epic lives. Uh, we'll have covered everything there. Um, but uh, And then, you know, we've got a little bit of game news. Uh, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Uh, Steelstar wrote in about lag. Uh, there's been some people complaining about the lag since the last uh, update and patch. It's been a little bit more uh, of a problem of late. Uh, he said, it's not an exaggeration to say that we have people working on lag every update, but we have extra people, himself included, looking into it right now, as we know there have been issues lately that increase the severity the longer we go between restarts. Um, little side note, they actually did a second restart last week. Uh, they did one, I think, on Tuesday uh, and then on Friday. Uh, they are tracking a specific source of game performance issues right now that we believe is a significant contributor, but we don't have any specific information to give out at this time, hence why they've been pretty quiet about it, heads down, working on it. When they do have info to share, they will be sure to let us know. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> this comes up so frequently. Um, uh, yeah, I, I've definitely noticed recently that it's been a little uh, laggier, a little less uh, consistent uh, as as it has been more recently. Uh, so it's good to know that they are, in fact, working on that, trying to iron some of that stuff out. Uh, there was... <laughs> Surprise, also, uh, the Hardcore League After Party. Uh, the Hardcore League server has reopened for additional character transfers uh, and other After Party activity. <laughs> they had previously said that it probably wouldn't come back up until January 5th. Uh, sur or in January. Surprise, it will be up through January 5th. <laughs> uh, so, once the Hardcore League server is closed after January 5th, the server will not reopen until Season 2, at which point there will be a character database purged. Make sure to get your stuff done before January 6th. So to reiterate and kind of clarify, uh, players have through January 5th to get their characters off of the hardcore server. That is the final window for character transfer, now through January 5th. If you want your hardcore characters, get them off by then. I would recommend that, you know, you've got uh, almost probably like three, three and a half weeks to get your characters off. Get those characters off that you really care about. Uh, and, you know, if you want to keep rolling daily dice over there, have a dummy character for that and you can transfer that one off, get the stuff off, and then delete it then. Uh, but that way you don't lose a character that maybe you want to keep. Uh, let's see, bonus days. The DDO bonus days are bringing us a Champion Hunter weekend now through December 15th. You can get limited time items with the Mysterious Remnants vendor in the Hall of Heroes. Interesting that it's only a weekend. <laughs> Typically, that is a week-long uh, bonus days. Give yourselves a lot of time to uh, collect those. I'm not sure why it's shorter. Uh, the store news. Uh, so December deals continue. Uh, this week, you can get 35% off of Warforged, 50% off of Warlock and the Mines of Tethyamar. 
and 75% off of Tomes of Learning. If you don't have Tomes of Learning, uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, now would be the time to get one. Uh, the other sale, the normal sales, is Honor Your Guild, 20% off of Astral Shards, Guild Renown Elixirs, and 50% off of Guild Charters and Guild Airship Beacons, now through December 19th. You can also get a scroll of Mass Aid times 10 with the coupon code AIDALL. I do not know if you need to have, be able to cast that spell, or if it's just a, uh, because it's a store item, I would assume that anyone could use it, but I've never bothered to use them. All right. That will take us to community news. Uh, the 363rd Chronicle. Uh, Cut Lap digs back in DDO's earliest days and uncovers some secrets. Uh, so you can check out that for the places at 2005. This is in the community spotlights. Uh, Voodoo Spice has a Too Hot to Handle tutorial. Uh, I highly recommend if you haven't been in Too Hot to Handle yet, uh, find some tutorial. Read more than one. Um, we did one for Dito Cast a while back. You can check out that show. Uh, Voodoo Spice has this one here. Read on the forums. Uh, you're just going to want to... <laughs> Your experience will go a lot better. It probably won't go great, but it'll be better if you have more of an idea of what's going on and some of the mechanics. Um, that raid can get out of hand in a hurry. You don't want to be in the middle of that. Uh, Stremtom also created a traf trash remover, so you can check out that build. The Guild for the Week, Warriors of Light, are a French-language guild looking to get the group back into action. The guild is currently above level 150 and has their own Discord server. Players of all levels can join there. They have a link to read more. Uh, the comment, how does the Festival Jester get to Stormreach? I'm going to assume that he has a sleigh that is drawn by uh, probably eight or nine of Winter Wolves with the antlers on them. Insight News, Damos of DDO tackled Keep on the Borderlands, so you can check out their show there. Uh, they've been away for a little while, but they're back. Uh, we got our, a shout-out for our episode last week. DDO players found out how they made a dirty kobold. Uh, DDO stream is highlighting Psycho Blonde, uh, Doug, and DDOPL. Um, and other Twitch streamers are, that are getting shout-out are Neradrir City and Skimorday, or Skimorady. Uh, YouTubers are also making new DDO videos, including the old school dungeon crawler, MMO Playa, and Gre Geek Dragon. Uh, so a lot of stuff. Uh, if you'd like to check out some DDO stuff, the uh, community is live and popping. Uh, Festival has begun. The gesture of Festival is now here, and the coins will drop in quests never on through January 5th, and the gesture will be here through January 12th uh, as well. And don't forget to check out Cordovan's weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream. And you can always watch that on YouTube if you can't watch it during the day. D&D uh, &D Night and Dito stream uh, this weekend is Jerry uh, hosting a holiday-themed uh, dungeon or uh, experience quest. I'm not sure. It will probably be crazy and esoteric. Uh, but uh, we do have D&D &D Night on Dito stream Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash Dito stream sponsored by Fantasy Grounds. Uh, Dio Kasplat will have one more episode uh, this coming Wednesday, which will kind of be the last one for the year. Uh, looking ahead, the, all, the Christmas and New Year's are on Wednesdays, which is a normal playtime. So uh, we're not going to do Dio Kasplat those days, uh, but I will be back for this week. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, and there you go. That's the news portion for the show. Not a whole lot going on this week. Uh, and I would expect that there to not be a whole lot going on through the rest of the year. Um, it would be unlikely that we would get much of an update unless they needed to hotfix something, which probably would have already happened. Um, so, uh, thanks to listening to the show. Thanks to uh, all of my guests uh, coming this week. Uh, Nimvind and Voodoo will be here uh, with the Past Life Prioritization Epic Lives Part 3. And thanks to all the contributors for DDOcast and to Standing Some Games and Lizard of the Coast and to Cyberish for hosting the podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can visit our website, ddocast.com, or you can support us on Patreon. If you have a DDO-themed webpage or you Twitch DDO and you'd like to be featured on our website, email us at ddocast at gmail.com. You can hit us up at ddocast.com for show notes, MP3s, our calendar, previous shows, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to be part of the show, uh, you can comment on this episode. 
Uh, maybe you'd like to ask us a question or have us discuss a topic. Always fun to get those. Or you just want to say hi, you can leave a comment or you can email us at ditocast at gmail.com. You can also find us on social media and follow us for the latest cast updates at ditocast on Twitter is the best place. I do not do a whole lot of Facebook stuff. Uh, but hey, if you message me, uh, I will generally respond. Uh, so stay tuned for part three of our epic lives past life prioritization. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, we are continuing our discussion on past life prioritization, epic past lives. Uh, this will be the third and final part. Uh, we'll be hitting primal sphere and epic completionist today. Uh, I'm your host, Patrick. With me uh, again this week is Nimvin Dirdsinger. Mary Nimis. And Voodoo Spice. Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, so we've talked about Divine, Martial, uh, Arcane, and kind of the nuts and bolts of Epic Lives. Uh, really quick recap, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, you get a passive uh, bonus for each of the four feet in the Primal Sphere, uh, but you can only have one of the stances active at a time um, from each sphere. So you get one from each sphere, but you can only have one Primal Sphere active at a given time. Uh, and then... Uh, yeah, so that kind of covers it all. And we'll get into Epic Completionist and kind of really kind of flesh out what, is, what does that look like? Uh, what, do you, what do you get out of that? And how do you get it? Um, but to start, you know, Primal Sphere. The last of the, the four spheres uh, that we haven't talked about. Uh, perhaps the most useful passive, uh, the passive past life. Uh, it's three hit points and an additional four per ten character levels. Uh, so that comes out to be 15, at level 30, that's 15 hit points per life. Uh, you can get that 12 times. Uh, so that's, uh, what, 160? Am I right? Uh, something like that. Uh, 15 times 12? Yeah. 150, 180? Some, somewhere in there. Uh, it, it's a fair number. Just... It's not any specific amount. Like that, let's say, like this is probably the most useful passive one, right? More hit points. One eighty is correct, and yes, it is tied for me. My I, number one's tied between primal or uh, and uh, divine because PR is nice, and um, second goes to martial for armor class, and least for me. Is the arcane one, Bo? You made a very good argument of why that shouldn't be. <laughs> well, I was just talking about this on my live stream last night. That oh, yeah. four out of five DDO players agree that the primary cause of death in DDO is running out of hit points. So they're important. You yeah. should get some. Well, and especially when you start talking about percent, adding percentages of hit points, because there's a lot more options on how to do that now. I mean, if you've got 180 extra hit points and then you're adding another 5% hit points and then another 10% hit points and then another 30% hit point, I mean, that adds up fast. That's a lot of extra hit points there, so. Math kills Nimbin, so be careful how much we do <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, I lose everything. To... Let, well, let me put it this way. Each one of these uh, primal feats, pa as the passive part, Almost gives you a toughness feat, a free toughness feat, right? Mm -hmm. Three quarters of a toughness feat. So that's that's a fair number, there. So uh, let's talk about the different feats. Uh, we'll start with double shot, and I have to say this is I think this is at the bottom of my list. Like if I'm gonna put all of the past lives total, I think double shots at the very bottom. It's three percent double shot per stack of this past life. 
Now, it has a significant advantage over the double strike in the sense that uh, double strike, getting over 100% doesn't give you any benefit. Double shot giving you over 100% actually can get you a third arrow or bullet. Now, having said that, the only people who can possibly use, utilize this feat are people who are using missile weapons, either a thrower or a crossbow or a bow, which is not a high percentage of the population. Uh, although you can make an argument that it is now with Inquisitive. Um, uh -huh. But I think there's better options under most circumstances uh, out of the street for those builds. That's funny. Usually when I just do a range build, I, I just toggle that on, but majority of the time and that's not even... I go for another one, which I'm probably sure we're going to get to pretty soon. Well, I mean, let's let's throw it into the mix right now, because we're going to talk about Colors of the Queen. The yeah, yes. Yeah. Right? So this one is your unarmed melee and range... Unarmed melee and range attacks and spells uh, have a 7% chance to produce a random effect. This triggers at most at once every 30 seconds. When you get to past life again, it goes down to 20 seconds and then a 10 second cooldown timer. Most of these random effects are extra damage or debuffs on the enemy you hit. It's very similar to double rainbow, uh, and it does stack with that. I mean, I think you, given that they're on the same channel, right, you can only have double shot or colors of the queen active at any given time. Most of the time, I'm running in colors of the queen. One, because it's more fun. <laughs> I think. Um, I mean, there's certain areas where I, I I wouldn't have it on where, you know, I guess, like, there's sometimes a, a Reaper can show up when, a, when one of the frogs you produce dies, right? Because you can turn a mob into a frog. I with, mean, there's uh, so many other ways you can make frogs, too, but yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't yeah, I, I pretty much this is my standard for for primal but Colors of the there, there is yeah, yeah there is times where um there were actually there were very rare times where it it messed me up like uh, when i was soloing litany on r5 a couple of lives ago and i gave a, a dot to the skeleton guy that healed him <laughs> that <laughs> sucked and, and some of the dots proc a lot of numbers. So he was healing 458, 456, 458, like, and I was like, okay, this is just silly. Well, it's going to amp, your spell power is going to amplify it, right? So, uh, that too. That'll hit. Now, I, I will say that the one place where you're going to use double shot over Colors of the Queen is when you're trying to time kills, right? Like, if you've got two things that need to die at roughly the same time, you probably shouldn't be using Colors. Um, because it will, you will kill something at the wrong time eventually with colors of the queen, uh, which can really derail a a raid, right? Um, but I think generally speaking, colors is going to be more useful than double shot, even at low levels. Like I've seen colors at low levels just kill something outright. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, I uh, the random sunbursts are really nice to have in uh, Harbor and Corthos level range because they'll just auto kill everything around. You. Thoughtgore is that in the chat is actually saying he goes for Colors of the Queen first. Like this is his first choice unless he's desperate for the PRR from Divine. I wouldn't disagree with him. Plus, yeah, it's fun, right? Like random effects are kind of fun. Make it more interesting. I don't know. It is fun. I'm. I. I have to admit, though, and I. And I ran Colors of the Queen for, you know, up until pretty recently. I switched to fast healing because I was getting a little tired of the random effects sometimes having bad effects, <laughs> being undesirable. Like, yeah, like I mean, yeah, you know, what? Sure. In fact, there's something I want to talk to you about after the show with regards Ooh. to two out to handle and you know, like things that could potentially heal Forge Race, for example. And Colors Ooh. of the Queen has been, you know, you know, people are pointing the finger at that, for example. So, you know, I've been turning it off lately, opting yeah. for fast healing, but fast healing isn't very exciting. But it's, yeah, it's generally speaking, Colors of the Queen is really awesome. Well, let's talk about fast healing next. Uh, so each minute you heal uh, with positive energy, five hit points, plus five hit points every five character levels. 
Uh, healing is doubled and tripled uh, with two or three stacks of this life. And what they mean by that is it doesn't actually multiply that. It, it hits you again. Um, so if you have three stacks of this, you're at level 30. Uh, let's see. Let's do some more math, right? Because that's fun. Uh, what is that? Oh, my brain hurts for some reason. It won't won't do math. That's what math. That's what math does to you. Well, usually I, I don't have this problem with math. Um, I had families and and kids and a dog, and then I started doing math, and all gone. Uh, it's thirty five hit hit points a level, I think, or hit hit points at level thirty there. Um, no, but it's no, no, it would be one hundred and fifty five. Voodoo knew the answer the whole time. He just wanted to check your math. Well, five right. plus five, five for every five character levels. Oh, for every five character levels. Yeah. Okay, I misread that. Um, but the the thing to know about this is Reaper actually severely hampers this, right? Because it's self healing, and the heal when they say the healing is doubled and tripled, you don't get hit for thirty five times three. You get hit for thirty five three times. So they each one of them gets hit with that percentage. You actually, it's more affected by a Reaper, um, which is unfortunate. Now, having said that, even in Reaper, this is essentially a free diehard feat because it will heal you and get you back up. Yeah. Assuming you don't die before then. I mean, if you if you, I if you just have. A primal stance to have a primal stance, and you don't have, for some reason, you just heard of Code of the Queen um, after we talked about this instead of before, which we did talk about Code of the Queen before this subject came up. So it would be weird. Um, I guess you could use, I don't know. I only used it once because I had to go to the corner store in the middle of a quest. Everything around me was dead, right? So I snuck, I was like, hurt right and i healed like one third of my hit points while walking to the corner store and back that was the only time i ever used this and that's what i i, I think it's for it's like oh well i'm gonna do an errand real quick i'm by myself I'm gonna heal up while i afk i mean my I tank know. runs in this a lot um especially if it's not in reaper mode right because you know, extra healing is great and i'm taking damage constantly so it's um it's really helpful, uh, and you know, I've, in killing time and on hard, my tank spent a lot of time soloing a platform. Uh, so all the incoming healing I could get by my generating by myself, especially for free, was great. So, um, it's probably one of the we you, you know you're probably going to be looking more at colors of the queen in general. But you know, hey, if you're a healer, uh, if you're just going to do a bunch of healing for a raid. I don't see a better option than fast healing, right? Primal attack, no skin. Uh, well, the other, uh, the other option you have here is uh, ancient power, which is plus two to attack per stack of this past life. Uh, if you're fighting in two-handed fighting style, you also gain plus two damage per stack of this life. Uh, so that would be your other option. Uh, again, if if you're primary primarily healing in a raid, or if you're a tank, you're probably not going in this direction. Because um, if you're a tank, you're probably using a shield. Um, plus six attack is not. I mean, at lower levels, I think you'd get more bang for it. But uh, I think it's maybe some at higher levels too. But plus six to attack is not necessarily a a exciting bonus, especially when you're comparing it to Colors of the Queen. Um, but as an alternative to I can't use colors because I don't want to kill or heal something, uh, I guess you could go this direction. I feel that it, it's also very n niche. It's just one of those niche ones. Like the mar All the martial stances that we've gotten are very dedicated to a very small area and like i'm pretty sure there's not many people that are, 
I mean, there is a few people that are doing two hand. This one also gives you extra benefits for two handed fighting, right? Yeah, two damage. I think this works in animal form, but I'm not positive. I mean, if it if it does, then that's great for mall wolves. But yeah. I, you know, what else is out there? Uh, great axe, well, barbarians, half orc. generally are two handed. But then the question is, is it better than colors of the queen? And I would say generally no. I mean, it's overkill at low levels because if you're playing a barbarian at low levels, you're you should be going crazy with the one shots anyway. So the <laughs> the color of the queen would be more fun, but at higher levels when you're trying to squeeze up as much as you can prior to weapon multiplier on crits, that that it translates to whatever your weapon multiplier is, right? So. I mean, I'm just not sure plus six to damage and attack is going to outpace Colors of the Queen in a DPS race in a vacuum. Well, you you know, one depends on procs, and like I said, you know, that that number does add before multiplier. So it's like if you have a times four crit weapon, that's, what, uh, 24 damage that's added into sure. it? I mean, yes. But again, like, and again, game is a, this is a game of plus ones, right? That every plus one yeah. gets you to the, these high numbers. But are you getting, um, you know, plus six to damage, even with the pl times four crit? When you're talking about having um, plus eighty to damage. It's such a small number relative to that. Whereas Colors of the Queen is you're just getting, I mean, you're talking about it in a level 15 quest doing 400 damage on a tick. Yeah. On a pro, like that's a lot more damage than plus six, right? Yeah, but oh man, that was such a misfortunate proc. But it it is proc based, and so so there is a I feel like there is a. Sure. A uh, long, long-lasting debate that would we'll proc in here, where we're we talking about procs versus onto him, which a lot of people like back in the the lit two days, like, oh well, the lit two is more damage. Well, min two was because you get damage every hit. Well, lit two when it procs, like when it procs or onto hit. Either way, I feel like both of these have their spot. But you're talking uh, about the of... debate, right? Yeah, I answered that question in my when I was doing a blog actually back when I still doing my blog. It's a, I think that's a a debate that most MMORPGs will have, right? Yeah. Like, oh, this does more damage on proc. This does that. Well, eventually, builds up to more damage per hit. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel I feel like this feat is specific for a very specific group, like Wood Elf Falchion users or barbarians or whatchamacallit but in general colors of the queen is probably the best way to go granted if you can't hit things and you have trouble hitting something then turn on the plus six to attack for sure but um voodoo of course is looking at us like who needs to hit things just turn on colors yeah. of the queen and throw spells at it you just eldritch burst eldritch burst Shield I think color, Colors does proc on Eldritch Blast, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Um, I think they, they generally consider Eldritch Blast a spell, right? It's, yeah. Um, what I'm talking about. But uh, there you go. There's there's the feeds. I, I mean, Colors is, I think, the clear winner for most builds. Uh, if you can't use Colors, fast healing is probably your, your next best option unless you're having to hit problems, then... Ancient power is going to be pretty good, but uh, there you go. Uh, so let's talk about kind of the other things you get, ancillary things you get with epic past lives, uh, and we'll start with hey, every four past lives you get, you get a fate point to spend. That's neat. Which is great considering what epic completionist is. <laughs> it's true, um, but to put that in perspective, so uh. Let's see, four past lives. Uh, there's 12 in each sphere, so that's an extra 12 fate points that you can get. Uh, that's not an insignificant number. 
uh, you can that can put you into some extra tier four and tier three abilities. Uh, big time. So that's that's a big thing there. Uh, the other thing you get is epic completionist, which we've talked about a little bit. Uh, the way this works is uh, you have to get three past lives from each sphere. Now you could do this the less effective way and get uh, take three different ones from each sphere. I think we would all recommend that you take you pick one feet out of each sphere and get three of that one specific one to start with. Yeah, don't dabble. Max out your stance yeah. from each yep. sphere. Uh, but once you have done that, you get another Twist of Fate slot. Uh, so from levels 1 to 29, that means you get four Twist of Fate slots. Uh, for At level 30, you get five, which is a lot of fun. I need to say. This now, is so delicious. Yeah. You need this. Um, I will say, I, I, we should point out, that the point progress, the uh, points, the um, the fate points, does progress in the same manner, right? So your your fourth uh, fate slot takes four points to unlock tier one, uh, and so on and so forth. Your fifth one takes five. Right? Did I get those numbers right? I think I got those numbers right. Yep. Yeah. Um. So it just like all the other ones, right? It it progresses. It, it can. It compounds just like the other ones. Um, but that extra fate slot can give you a lot of options um, and whatnot. Um, and that's where that's obviously because this is expensive. You know, that's where you put your tier one yeah. twist, right? You know, your primal scream, uh, your stat point. You're at an odd con cocoon. or an uh, odd caster stat. Uh, cocoon, right. That's where you put that one. Yeah, if you don't know, so really briefly how this works, you, the twist of fate slots. The first one, it takes one point to upgrade to level one, and then it's two points to upgrade to two. I haven't paid attention to this in so long. Yeah, it, it goes one, up in two, increment three, by four, one. One, two, three, four to upgrade it to tier four. So it takes, but the next one down, right? Your your second twist, it starts at two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Um. So, you know, if you want, if you're gonna have a, upgrade tier one to tier your first slot to tier four before you upgrade your second one to tier four, right? Just your points will be spent way more ep- economically. Um, so that's a, an important thing to consider. Um, big picture, like you kind of say in Voodoo, you don't have any epic past lives. Let's talk about how should someone go about. Um, figuring out what they're going to do for epic past lives. Aside from the fact, we'll, we'll kind of already agree, we've talked about going 1 to 30 makes this easier. If you're already doing racial or heroic lives, uh, going 1 to 30 just makes this a lot le- a lot more smooth from a time perspective. You're getting all your first-time bonuses every time. It doesn't take that much longer to do. Um, how would we recommend someone approach from a zero, we've done no epic past lives to getting all of the epic past lives, what's kind of the best course of action? Well, you're going to want to review all the different stances, and you're going to want to figure out which ones you like best, which, and determine specifically which one you like best from each sphere. And then you're going to want to work on triple stacking that in order of priority for you. If you're playing the same build every time or the same kind of builds, you know, you're playing melees, for example, yeah, you're going to want that double strike, for example. That's going to be a high priority. If you're playing a variety of builds, if you like to switch it up every life, then you might want to focus on things that are good for no matter what build you're doing, like you maybe the MRR stance, for example. Colors. Or colors of the queen, right, or, you know, the skill the skill mastery stance out of Marshall. If if you like the if you like the variety, so if you like variety of builds, go for the stances that are good for any build that have universal appeal. If you like playing the same kind of build every life, then figure out the stances that are good for that build and focus on triple stacking each one of those stances, and then also triple stack a stance out of each of the four spheres. That will give you your epic completionist. That will give you that extra tasty twist of fate slot. 
and then you'll be a baller. See, I'm a front loader. You know, I, I, uh, so this is how I would do it. I like to front load as much of the, the stuff I don't want to do. So that way the rest of the adventure is <laughs> so like my last past life before I have all triple heroic completion is, is warlock. Like, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> it's going to be so easy. It's a, uh, so this is what I would do. I would start off and it would, it, you're going to get one stance per karma. Get your primal, get your d uh, divine one. You get HP and PRR to make the rest of the other ones pretty easy, right? You uh, do either arcane or martial or martial or arcane, bada beam, bada boom, you got your next slot. What you want to do is you want to invest that slot into penny stocks. And in a couple of years, that's going to do a good return. Most can, you keep on doing that though. And uh, you, you'll have HP, PRR, and all this stuff, you you go through it four times, you and then you'll have it all. And no matter what level you are, you're gonna have tons of uh, bulkiness. If you hadn't noticed, a lot of the, the the passives are ways to absorb and survive damage. Armor class, absorption from elements, HP, um, PRR. This is all ways to help you mitigate stuff. So this is definitely good past lives to look into if you have a squishy issue. Yeah, I think it's all great advice, right? Find one from each fear that you're going to get three of first. Pick which one of those you want first. Get that one. I tend to say, you know, pay less attention to the passive, one, passive part of it as much as the um, which sphere, which one of each sphere you want first. If you're starting from zero, it doesn't matter which one you pick, right? Like, you're going to get the pass same passive bonus for any one. And you want to get three from each sphere first, because that unlocks your epic completionist. And then you can go back and get the other ones. So, which one do you mostly want to... Which of the feats do you mostly want to have active? Get those four. And then if, look at your passive ones and figure out what do you, which ones you want to get next. Do you want the, PR, the PRR? Do you want the hit points? Do you want the AC? The energy absorption? Probably you want the hit points of the PRR first. That would be where I would lean. Uh, and I then would get all of those ones, right? I would definitely go hit points because that's the only one you people can see, right? <laughs> and if you were going to brag to your friends, like, oh, I have all these past lives, what are they going to be able to see when you join the party? That HP. So get all the hit points you can first, and that way you look as big as you talk. And then sure. you can fill in that walk. Not a bad choice. Fake it till you make it, in other words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't do any damage, I mean, but I have is still 10, faking it, so. Exactly. Um, now, as a longer term strategy, and I I'm not I'm not sure if I know how to to word this the the best way, so help me out. But you know, if you like to do the same build over and over that probably means there's like, you know, just certain destinies that you like to run it. And sure. so, cause that, that's what I do. I like to run, you know, both, mostly the same builds over and over. So I, you know, there's like one destiny that I want to run in all the time, which means that trying to build up your karma, your 6 million karma, so you can prep that sphere to pull an epic pass life from can sometimes be challenging, you know, like, you know, I'd like to play my casters. So I dread running in the martial sphere, for example. <laughs> So one of the things that I would like to do is, you know, maxing out your karma in your main destiny, that's easy, right? Because you're running in it all the time. So you might want to sort of, you know, in a, in a, as a long-term strategy, kind of alternate your past lives. You know, pull one from your main sphere, and then the next time pull one from an off sphere. And then pull one from your main sphere, and then from an off sphere. And that can help you, you know, not make that earning karma such a grind. Something else I would I would strongly consider too, if if you're starting from zero, right? Think about your how you can amplify your heroic experience, right? If you're doing racial lives, you can play whatever build you want, right? But if you need to get a fighter past life, right? I would suggest to you that if you're plotting this out, your 
spider past life would probably be a good time to match with a martial, like having to get a fill out your martial karma, right? Most death. So yeah. if your next life is going to be a fighter, this time, this life, take out your martial, like, take a martial past life, right? So then when you're playing a fighter, you can go up in the martial tree and it'll be a better experience than if, say, your next life is going to be a fighter life. Well, I'm going to take an arcane past life this time. So <laughs> now I have to, when I'm going from 20 to 30, I'm playing a fighter in the arcane sphere, which granted with the new Fate Singer, uh, yeah, Fate Singer, it's less painful. And then the next time around, I'm going to take a martial past life, and then I'm going to, my next life, I'm going to play a wizard, which Samus is yelling at me right now, saying, you can play a, a, a wizard in martial and play a melee wizard. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's not the most, um, find a, a sorcerer or a war, like, you know, like, there's, yeah. think about, if you're going to be, um, stacking these past these heroic lives with your epic lives. Think about what your what your next life is going to be, and what your next build is going to be, and take a past life or epic past life now from the the sphere that you're going to spend want to spend most of your time in because you're going to spend like Nimvin was saying I think last time you're probably going to spend level twenty to twenty seven twenty eight in the sphere that you need to rebuild the karma in. Now, there's some ways to get around some of that, right? Like, say you you always play Warlocks every life and love playing a Warlock and you're not going to play a fighter, a melee build, come hell or high water. There's some ways that you can kind of game the system a little bit. Uh, and one of the ways you know, is, uh, it's been mentioned in the chat just recently is Sagas, right? So even your Heroic Sagas, don't take the XP. I don't actually take my XP from my Heroic Sagas until I hit level 20. Same. Uh, but you can use those when you're doing, you know, put it in your, make sure you're in the destiny, the, the sphere that you need to get the XP in, and dump, you, dump your Saga XP into that sphere. You can do a, you can play a, a really awkward game. Now, you, you might get tripped up, so you gotta be really careful doing this, but you know, when you're in the Slayer area and you're doing the three to five thousand or the five thousand to seventy five hundred, right? Go in the destiny you want to play in. When you're about two hundred to a hundred short on kills, get out, change your destiny, go back in. You can. Do you know, that. I would say you know, you, you, Slayers are so so much lower demand that you can even get in, get away with running in an off destiny, and that way I mean, you don't have to try to remember, like, you know. It, that that's ideal what you're saying, but if it were me, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll forget. I'll be like, yeah, and 200 slayers, I'm gonna oh look a penny. You know, I get distracted. <laughs> yeah, no, I and, and I'm gonna forget. That's just who I am. I totally agree with you, and that's the way that I would. I that's why I don't do that either. <laughs> but it's an option. <laughs> um, yeah, I just we, tough it out until I get the karma. Like I'll just level up to almost yeah. 28. And then I'll, I'll switch. Like I'll I'll bite I'll bite the dust for that one. But not only slayers in in your you know your off destiny that you need the karma and dailies as well. When you're running easier content, mm -hmm. you know that's you definitely want to go into those other spheres where you need karma. But if you're running more serious content, you know you're running some reaper quests or you know you're under level or something. You know go to your your primary your main destiny challenges uh, there's plenty of wiggle room you know there's you, you need six million karma but there's 8.2 to cap so that means you can you can uh you know if you're trying to epic reincarnate as soon as you hit 30 well you have 2.2 million xp that you can earn in your main sphere and still get six million comfortably in an off sphere i would suggest to you on in that vein of thought you know, if you're level 26 and your guild is gonna is running Reaper Three Shroud, and you're gonna take your level 26, and they're kind enough to bring it, bring a good destiny. Don't bring the destiny sphere that you're yeah. trying to level up. You know, if you're running, if you're level 26, 27, and you're running in a group that's, hey, we're gonna do 10 skull Ravenloft. Yeah, you can come. Don't bring a good destiny, right? Like, yeah. bring your your best destiny. Don't be, don't be running. Grandmaster of Flowers as a warlock. 
in Reaper and game raids and and yeah. you know high skull reapering is not the time to yeah. level and off destiny right and i've seen a lot of people do that and it's you know at least ask the leader first before you do something like that um, i've done so. that accidentally and i was fine i noticed after raids was up but i'm a uh, nimbin you have a really good group of raiders who probably didn't notice your low level of play not matching exactly. up to your normally low level of play. So that's that's true. true, he is Nimvin. I am Nimvin. I surround myself with capable people so I can just watch Netflix. But, you know, but plot, what kind of what we're saying is, you know, try to plot those out. If you know you're going to be doing some fighter lives, that's a great time to do, to get that martial XP. Uh, you're doing Warlock lives, it's a great time to do um, Divine or Arcane, right? Like, So consider those and, and match them. You'll, you'll just have a better experience, right? Because then you get to play... Epic Destinies are fun. There's a lot of cool things that you can play with in there. It's lame when you're playing a Barbarian, and now they've, they've definitely made this less bad, but like when you're playing a Barbarian and you're in Grandmaster of Flowers, that's no fun. Like You just don't get any... You know, there's not that much cool stuff you can do in Grandmaster of Flowers as a Barbarian. Well, they they made it really less, interesting because, uh, yeah, the every uh, tree definitely has a, a tree that's really okay with uh, with martial, right? Like they they yeah. made the the stuff balance. Like Fate Singer, you you can if you're not really an arcane person, Fate Singer probably has something for you. Uh, May uh, Magister is now really pretty good with DCs. They they changed that, and uh, Draconic uh, Incarnate. It's Dr Draconic Incarnate, and then um, you know what I mean, like the Sharadi Champions, obviously for range and a little bit for casters. The other trees, kind of like there to get twists from, and then you got uh, Fury of the Wild. Like every every Karma seems to have a, a place where you can kind of sit at its pew if you don't feel comfortable at. For I would say the the hardest one to to find that a destiny that really makes some sense and you can get some good bang for your buck out of is any kind of a caster in the martial tree. I think it's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. uh, well, now you don't need the stances and stuff like that. You can actually get uh, what I've done is I twist from Grand, or I use Grandmaster of Flowers actually for the saves. The boost to saves and the sure. non-failures on the one. You know, there's little things in there, uh, knickknacks out of there that is, you know, if why not, right? Twist and base casters can obviously go into Grandmaster as well. That yeah. too. But yeah, they're not failing on a, a one is nice until level 27. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there's things you can do, but it's... But I mean, that's clearly less fun than playing a Warlock in Sharati or... Mm-hmm. In, right, so there's... there's. I have always had the experience, and I, I have my general experience hearing from others is that playing against type as it were as a caster in the marsh anything in the martial sphere is less exciting because there's just less there that's fun for an arcane yeah so, there's definitely no casting ca yeah. stuff in there so like you know like exalted angel or even Divine Crusader, or like Sharadi, or anything in the arcane, like there's casting caster stuff, and Marshall's strictly like saves and action boosts and backstab. It's, it's a different uh, part of your character that those classes kind of embody. I feel like that's what the system's about. You know, the Marshall side is definitely for to hit and action boosts and, um, saves for instance and then the other trees have their purposes uh, it it's definitely not ideal for a caster but like i said the saves is not bad uh anything you guys want to say before we close it up about uh past lives for epic lives or past lives in general i feel pretty good i uh i think i said every, a lot of words already <laughs> i think like just stepping back, my last closing thought in this whole series, and I think we talked about this really early on, but step back, big picture, spending a half an hour to an hour 
just kind of thinking and plotting out how you want to kind of do these lives together will really amplify your enjoyment, I think. Oh, yeah. Me and Voodoo can speak on that from experience. We did over 40 lives together. And we uh, pretty much planned. And it's really nice having, like, a group of two to four people that could just communicate well and has the same schedule-ish. That's something worth pointing out, too. Like, I was just kind of talking from, from your own insular, your enjoyment, and, you know, think about how you're going to be doing it. But, you know, if if you're going to be... If you're in a group, a, a static group or a small group, or have a partner or something, you know, when one of you is doing a, a a fighter life, that could be a good time for the other one to do a healer life, right? Like you can, you can kind of amplify the uh, Tetris a little bit, if you will, um, by thinking about how you can your builds can ma- mesh well with each other. Uh, oh yeah. Well. CC, like, if if you want to learn the ma- beauties of Hold Monster Mass, <laughs> that's when your friend's playing a fighter or a barbarian. Yeah. So, you know, use tricks like that. But um, hopefully this series was really helpful, um, and we hope that uh, it will make your past life grind more enjoyable, a little easier to understand and navigate through. Uh, so thanks for listening. We'll have a new topic next time. Uh, thanks to Nimvin and uh, Voodoo uh, for joining me today. Nimvin, uh, tell us about the the stuff that you want to plug. I uh, uh, the stuff will really Twitch TV slash Nimvin, which is written underneath my name. That's where I live stream almost daily, um, and of course my YouTube Nimvin third singer um where i post a lot of videos there's upcoming series that are already recorded just need editing so if you want to learn how to do things like uh the quickest and efficient way in my opinion on how to do sharn keep an eye out there it's gonna be a biggie and voodoo yeah hey do you want to know where the internet's largest source of ddo videos is just go to my YouTube channel and you're going to find over 850 DDO videos. Raid guides, quest walkthroughs, crafting tutorials, fun series, and so much more at uh, YouTube channel Voodoo Spice. And you can also catch me live streaming nearly every day, often with Nimbin here and my other awesome guildies, on my Twitch channel Voodoo Spice as we're grinding through past lives. And we also raid every day, so... Check us out or at uh, either YouTube channel Voodoo Spice or Twitch channel Voodoo Spice. Uh, and hey, uh, coming up here soon, I'm guessing High Lord Teaching Raids? Yeah, so after the new year, hoping to bring back our teaching raids. So these are for uh, these are public events for, for new players. These are for people who, you know, either are new and haven't gotten into raiding yet, or you're maybe even you're a veteran and you didn't, never got into raiding, or maybe you had a bad experience in raiding and you decided you hated it, or you were intimidated by raids, or you're scared, or whatever, like these events are for you. And so, you know, this will be our seventh year doing them, I think, sixth or seventh. And uh, we'll be working through pretty much every raid in the game Maybe not too hot to handle, <laughs> but uh, at least every other raid. And we take it at a nice, slow learning pace, a lower difficulty, so you could, you know, we can focus on learning and teaching, and uh, you know, not worry about you know dying and stuff. And it's a lot of fun. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, if you feel like you know you're not a good enough player, your gear or your build's not good enough, or you don't, you never raided before. Like that's okay. That doesn't exclude you. It just means these are for you. You're precisely who we're trying to reach out for. And I will announce these in the Sarlona forum uh, shortly after the new year. And it's usually they'll they'll be on Saturdays. Uh, and uh, I post the raid of the week every week in the Sarlona forum. Raid tours. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. I think the, the too hot to handle teaching raid is probably going to have to uh, just be your guild showing you how to showing people how to do too hot to handle as opposed to there. There's no um, beginner's pace in that one. There, there's you know? not. It's that's <laughs> that's, it's, a, that's a different topic, but yeah, it bums me out. That's a I that's mean, a if, luge a luge raid. You you go over the cliff and start the raid, and you just it just picks up steam. 
I mean, if you can if you can get enough DPS to finish the first hall and just teach them what levers is and like show them downstairs levers, sure. I feel like that would be a big foot uh, education. Like, imagine getting a newbie who never did the raid but knows how to do levers. Like, at least you're doing. Yeah, you could probably do something like that. Um, and hey, if you're not on Sarlona, because yet I mean, you guys run it on Sarlona, but if you're not on Sarlona, usually. Uh, live stream these, and they're on available on YouTube, so you can go and see what you're doing, and and still have that experience, even though you're not necessarily playing or hey, you don't get us one of the spots. You can still, you know, learn from the high level yep. teaching raids. So you can watch live, you can ask questions live, and it's a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, all right. So, uh, thanks to you guys today. Thanks for uh, hanging out today, recording all this stuff. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can visit our website, ditocast.com, or you can support us on Patreon. You can also find show notes, past shows, and more on our website. You can also find us on social media and follow us for the latest cast updates. I am at ditocast on Twitter. If you'd like to join the discussion, you can leave a comment, or you can email us at ditocast at gmail.com. So until next time, may all your attack rolls be crits, all your chest level appropriate, have fun, and don't forget to gather for buffs. Thank you.